Gospel of Bartholomew In the time before the Passion of our Lord Christ, all the apostles were gathered together, and they asked and besought him, Lord, show us the secrets of the heaven. But Jesus answered, I can reveal nothing to you before I have put off this body of flesh. But when he had suffered and risen again, all the apostles at the sight of him did not dare to ask him, because his appearance was not as it was before, but revealed the fullness of his Godhead. But Bartholomew went up to him and said, Lord, I wish to speak to you. Jesus answered him, Beloved Bartholomew, I know what you wish to say. Ask then, and I will tell you all you wish to know, and I myself will make known to you what you do not say. Bartholomew said to him, Lord, when you went to be hanged on the cross, I followed you at a distance and saw how you were hanged on the cross and how the angels descended from heaven and worshipped you. And when darkness came, I looked out and saw that you had vanished from the cross. Only I heard your voice in the underworld, and suddenly a great wailing and gnashing of teeth arose. Tell me, tell me Lord, where you went from the cross. And Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Bartholomew, my beloved, because you saw this mystery, and now I will tell you everything you ask me. When I vanished from the cross, I went to the underworld to bring up Adam and all the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The archangel Michael had asked me to do this. When I descended with my angels to the underworld in order to dash in pieces the iron bars and shatter the portals of the underworld, Hades said to the devil, I perceive that God has come down upon the earth. And the angels cried to the mighty ones, Open your gates, you princes, for the king of glory has come down to the underworld. Hades asked, Who is the king of glory who has come down to us? And when I had descended five hundred steps, Hades began to tremble violently and said, I believe that God has come down. His strong breath goes before him. I cannot bear it. But the devil said to him, Do not submit, but make yourself strong. God has not come down. But when I had descended five hundred steps more, the strong angels cried out, Open doors of your prince. Swing open you gates, for see the king of glory has come down. And again Hades said, Woe is me, I feel the breath of God, and yet you say God has not come down upon the earth. Beelzebub replied, Why are you afraid? It is a prophet, and you think it is a god? The prophet has made himself like God. We will take him and bring him into those who think to ascend into heaven. And Hades said, Which of the prophets is it? Tell me, is it Enoch, the scribe of righteousness? But God has not allowed him to come down upon the earth before the end of the six thousand years. Do you say that it is Elias the avenger? But he has not come down before the end. What am I to do for the destruction is from God? For already our end is at hand, for I have the number of the years in my hands. But when the devil perceived that the word of the Father had come down upon the earth, he said, Do not fear, Hades. We will make fast the gates and make strong our bars, for God himself does not come down upon the earth. And Hades said, Where shall we hide ourselves from the face of God, the great king? Permit me, do not resist, for I was created before you. And thereupon they dashed in pieces the gates of brass, and I shattered the iron bars. And I went in and smote him with a hundred blows, and bound him with fetters that cannot be loosed. And I brought out all the patriarchs, and came again to the cross. And Bartholomew said to him, Lord, I saw you again hanging on the cross, and all the dead arising and worshipping you. Tell me, Lord, who was he whom the angels carried in their arms, that exceedingly large man? And what did you say to him that he groaned so deeply? It was Adam, the first created, for whose sake I came down from heaven upon the earth. And I said to him, I was hanged upon the cross for your sake and for the sake of your children. And when he heard that, he groaned and said, so you were pleased to do, O Lord. Again Bartholomew said, Lord, I also saw the angels ascending before Adam and singing praises. But one of the angels, greater than the others, would not go up. He had his hand in, a, in his hand a fiery sword and looked at you. And all the angels besought him to go up with him, but he would not. But when you commanded him, I saw a flame issuing out of his hands, which reached as far as the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Bartholomew, my beloved, because you saw these mysteries. This was one of the avenging angels who stand before my father's throne. He sent this angel to me, and for this reason he would not go up, because he wished to destroy the power of the world. 
But when I commanded him to go up, a flame issued from his hand, and after he had rent the veil of the temple, he divided it into two parts as a testimony to the children of Israel for my passion, because they crucified me. And when he had said this, he said to the apostles, Wait for me in this place, for today a sacrifice is offered in paradise, that I may receive it after my arrival. And Bartholomew said to him, Lord, what sacrifice is offered in paradise? Jesus answered, The souls of the righteous, when they leave the body, go to paradise, and unless I am present, there they cannot enter. Bartholomew asked, Lord, how many souls leave the world every day? Jesus answered, Thirty thousand. And again Bartholomew asked, Lord, when you lived among us, did you receive the sacrifices in paradise? Jesus answered, Truly I say to you, my beloved, even when I taught among you, I sat at the right hand of the Father and received the sacrifices in paradise. And Bartholomew said, Lord, if thirty thousand souls leave this world daily, how many are admitted into paradise? Jesus answered, Only three. Bartholomew again asked, Lord, how many souls are born into the world every day? Jesus answered, Only one over and above those who leave the world. And when he had said this, he gave them the peace and vanished from their sight. Now the apostles were in a place called Chitir with Mary. And Bartholomew came to Peter and Andrew and John and said to them, Let us ask Mary, her who is highly favored, how she conceived the incomprehensible, or how she carried him who cannot be carried, or how she bore so much greatness. But they hesitated to ask her. Therefore Bartholomew said to Peter, Father Peter, you, as the chief one, go to her and ask her. But Peter said to John, You are a chaste youth and blameless. You must ask her. As they were all doubtful and pondered the matter to and fro, Bartholomew came to her with a cheerful countenance and said, You who are highly favored, tabernacle of the Most High, unblemished, we, all the apostles, ask you, but they have sent me to you, to tell us how you conceived the incomprehensible, or how you carried him who cannot be carried, or how you bore so much greatness. But Mary answered, Do not ask me concerning this mystery. If I begin to tell you, fire will come out of my mouth and consume the whole earth. But they asked her still more urgently, and since she did not wish to deny the apostles a hearing, she said, Let us stand up in prayer. And the apostles stood behind Mary, and she said to Peter, Peter, chief of the apostles, the greatest pillar, do you stand behind me? Did not the Lord say that the head of the man is Christ? but the head of the woman is the man. Therefore stand in front of me to pray. But they said to her, In you the Lord had set his tabernacle and was pleased to be contained by you. Therefore you now have more right to lead than we in the prayer. And she answered them, You are shining stars, as the prophet said. I lifted up my eyes to the hills, from which comes my help. You then are the hills, and you must pray. The apostles said to her, you ought to pray as the mother of the heavenly king. Mary said to them, In your likeness God formed the sparrows and sent them to the four corners of the world. But they answered her, He whom the seven heavens scarcely contain was pleased to be contained by you. Then Mary stood up before them and spread out her hands to heaven and began to pray thus, O oh God, exceeding great and all wise king of the ages, indescribable, ineffable, who created the breadths of the heaven by your word and arranged the vault of heaven in harmony, who gave form to disorderly matter and brought together that which was separated, who parted the gloom of the darkness from the light, who made the waters to flow from the same source, before whom the beings of the air tremble and all the creatures of the earth fear, who gave the earth its place and did not wish it to perish, in bestowing upon it abundant rain and caring for the nourishment of all things, the eternal word of the Father, the seven heavens would scarcely contain you, but you were pleased to be contained in me, without causing me pain, you who are the perfect word of the Father, through whom everything was created. Glorify your exceedingly great name, and allow me to speak before your holy apostles. And when she had ended the prayer, she began to say to them, Let us sit down on the ground. Come, Peter, chief of the apostles, sit on my right hand, and put your left hand under my shoulder. And you, Andrew, do the same on my left hand. And you, Chase John, hold my breast. And you, Bartholomew, place your knees on my shoulders and pl press close my back so that when I begin to speak, my limbs are not loosed. And when they had done that, she began. 
When I lived in the temple of God and received my food from the hand of an angel, one day there appeared to me one in the form of an angel, but his face was indescribable, and in his hand he had neither bread nor cup, as had the angel who came to me before. And immediately the veil of the temple was rent, and there was a violent earthquake, and I fell to the earth, for I could not bear the sight of him. But he took me with his hand and raised me up, and I looked toward heaven, and there came a cloud of dew in my face, and sprinkled me from head to foot, and he wiped me with his robe. And then he said to me, Hail, you who are highly favored, the chosen vessel. And then he struck the right hand of his garment, and there came forth an exceedingly large loaf, and he placed it upon the altar of the temple, and first ate of it himself, and then gave to me also. And again he struck his garment on the left side, and I looked, and I saw a cup full of wine, and he placed it upon the altar of the temple, and drank from it first himself, and gave it to me also. And I looked and saw that the bread did not diminish, and the cup was full as before. And then he said, Three more years, and I will send my word, and you shall conceive my son. And through him the whole world shall be saved, but you will bring salvation to the world. Peace be with you, favored one, and my peace shall be with you forever. And when he had said this, he vanished from my eyes, and the temple was as before. As she was saying this, fire came from her mouth, and the world was on the point of being burned up. Then came Jesus quickly and said to Mary, Say no more, or today my whole creation will come to an end. And the apostles were seized with fear, lest God should be angry with them. And he went with them to the mountain, Mauria, and sat down in their midst. But they hesitated to question him, because they were afraid. And Jesus answered and said, Ask me what you wish, so that I can teach you and show you, for there are still seven days. And then I ascend to my Father, and shall no more appear to you in this form. But they, hesitating, said to him, Lord, show us the abyss as you promised us. He answered, It is not good for you to see the abyss, but if you wish it, I will keep my promise. Come, follow me and see. And he led them to a place called Cherubim, that is, place of truth. And he beckoned the angels of the west, and the earth was rolled up like a papyrus roll, and the abyss was exposed to their eyes. When the apostles saw it, they fell on their faces. But Jesus said to them, did I not say to you that it was not good for you to see the abyss? And he again beckoned to the angels, and the abyss was covered up. And he took them and brought them to the Mount of Olives. And Peter said to Mary, You who are favored, ask the Lord to reveal to us all that is in the heavens. And Mary answered Peter, O rock hewn above, did not the Lord build his church upon you? You therefore should be the first to go and ask him. Peter said again, You were made the tabernacle of the Most High. You ask him, Mary said. You are the image of Adam. Was not he formed first and then Eve? Look at the sun, it shines like Adam. Look at the moon, it is full of clay, because Eve transgressed the commandment. For God placed Adam in the east and Eve in the west, and he commanded the two lights to shine, so that the sun with its fiery chariot should shine on Adam in the east, and the moon in the west should shed its, on Eve its milk-white light. But she defiled the commandment of the Lord, and therefore the moon became soiled, and its light does not gleam. Since therefore you are the likeness of Adam, you ought to ask him. But in me the Lord took up his abode, that I might restore the dignity of women. Now when they came to the top of the mountain, the Lord parted from them for a little while. Then Peter said to Mary, You made good the transgression of Eve, changing her shame into joy, so you ought to ask. But when Jesus appeared again, Bartholomew said to him, Lord, show us the adversary of men, that we may see his form, or what his work is, or where he comes from, or what power he has that he did not even spare you, but caused you to be hanged on the cross. And Jesus looked at him and said, O oh, bold heart, you ask for that which you cannot look upon. But Bartholomew was frightened, and he fell at Jesus' feet and began to say, O lamp, never extinguished, Lord Jesus Christ, everlasting one who gave grace for the whole world to those who love you, and gave everlasting light through your appearing on earth, who at the command of the Father gave up your life above and completed your work, who changed the dejection of Adam into joy and overcame the sorrow of Eve with gracious countenance by your birth from a virgin mother. Do not be angry with me and grant me the right to ask. When he said this, Jesus raised him up and asked him, Bartholomew, do you wish to see the adversary of men? 
I tell you that when you see him, not only you, but the apostles with you and Mary will fall on your, on your faces and will be like the dead. But they all said to him, Lord, we wish to see him. And he led them down from the Mount of Olives and threatened the angels of the underworld and beckoned to Michael to sound his mighty trumpet in the height of heaven. Then the earth was shaken and Beliar came up, held by 666 angels and bound with fiery chains. He was 1,600 yards long and 40 yards broad. His face was like a lightning of fire, and his eyes like sparks, and from his nostrils came a stinking smoke. His mouth was like a cleft of rock, and a single one of his wings was 80 yards long. As soon as the apostles saw him, they fell to the ground on their faces and became like dead men. But Jesus came near and raised up the apostles and gave them the spirit of power. Then he said to Bartholomew, Come near to him, Bartholomew, and place your feet on his neck. Then he will tell you what his work is, and how he deceives men. And Jesus stood at a distance with the apostles, and Bartholomew raised his voice and said, O womb more spacious than a city, O womb, o womb that contained him whom the seven heavens do not contain, you contain him without pain, and held in your bosom him who changed his being into the smallest of things. O womb that bore, concealed in your body, the Christ, who has been made visible to many. O womb that became more spacious than the whole creation. And Bartholomew was afraid and said, Lord Jesus, give me a hem of your garment, that I may venture to approach him. Jesus answered him, You cannot have a hem of my garment, for it is not the garment which I wore before I was crucified. And Bartholomew said, Lord, I fear, lest, as he did not spare your angels, he will swallow me up also. Jesus answered, Were not all things made by my word and according to the plan of my Father? The spirits were made subject to Solomon himself. Go, therefore, since you have been commanded to do so in my name, and ask him what you wish. And Bartholomew went and trod upon his neck and pressed down his face to the earth as far as his ears. And Bartholomew asked him, Tell me who you are and what is your name. He replied, Ease me a little and I will tell you who I am, and how I came into this condition, and what my work is, and how great my power is. And Bartholomew eased him and asked him, Tell me all you have done and all that you do. Beliar answered and said, If you wish to know my name, I was first called Satanael, which means angel of God. But when I rejected the image of God, I was called Satan, which means angel of hell. And again Bartholomew asked him, Reveal everything to me and conceal nothing from me. And he replied, I swear to you by the mighty glory of God that even if I wished I could conceal nothing from you, for he who can convict me stands near me. For if I had the power, I would destroy you as I hurled one of you to destruction. I was a first angel to be created. For when God made the heavens, he took a handful of fire and formed me first. Michael second, the captain of the hosts above. Gabriel third, Uriel fourth, Raphael fifth, Nathanael sixth, and six thousand other angels whose names I cannot tell. There are rod bearers, lictors of God, and these scourges me seven times a day and seven times a night and never leave me alone and break in pieces all my power. These are the avenging angels who stand by God's throne. All these belong to the first created angels. And after them was the whole number of the angels created, one hundred myriads for the first heaven, and the same number for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh heavens. Outside the seven heavens there is the first sphere, the firmament, and there are dwell the angels of power who influence men. There are also four angels who are set over the winds. The first rules over Boreas. He is called Chirum, and he has in his hand a fiery rod and restrains the great moisture which this wind has, so that the earth should not dry up. And the angel who rules over Apartheas is called Uritha. He has a torch of fire in his hand, and it holds it to him so that his sides and warms his coldness so that he does not freeze the earth. And the angel of the south wind is called Kerkutha, and he breaks of his violence so as not to shake the earth. And the angel who is set over the southwest wind is called Nautha, and he has the rod of ice in his hand and puts it at his mouth and quenches the fire which comes from his mouth. 
And if the angel did not quench it at his mouth, it would set the whole world on fire. And another angel rules over the sea and makes it rough with waves. And I will tell, not tell you more, for he who stands near me does not permit it. Then Bartholomew asked him, How do you chastise the souls of men? Beliar answered, Am I to describe to you the punishment of the hypocrites, the slanderers, the jesters, the covetous, the adulterers, the soothsayers, the sorcerers, and all those who believe in us, and all behind of whom I stand? Bartholomew said to him, I wish you to be brief, and he gnashed his teeth together, and there came up from the abyss a wheel with a sword flashing fire which had pipes, and I asked him, What is this sword? He answered, it is the sword for the gluttonous. They are put into this pipe be because in their gluttony they turn to every kind of sin. Into the second pipe come the slanderers because they secretly slander their neighbors. Into the third pipe come the hypocrites and the rest whom I trip up with my machinations. And Bartholomew said, Do you do this by yourself? Satan replied, If I were able to go out by myself, I would destroy the whole world in three days. But neither I nor any of the six hundred goes out, for we have other swift servants whom we command. We equip them with a many mar barbed hook, and send them out to hunt, and they catch men's souls for us, enticing them with the sweetness of various allurements, that is, drunkenness, laughter, slandering, hypocrisy, pleasures, fornications, and other devices in their treasury which weaken men. I will tell you also the rest of the names of the angels. The angel of the hail is called Mermaoth. He holds the hail on his head, and my servants adjure him and send him wherever they wish. And other angels rule over the snow, and others rule over the thunder, and others over the lightning. And when a spirit wishes to go forth from among us, either over land or over water, these angels send out fiery stones and set their limbs on fire. Bartholomew said, Be silent, dragon of the abyss. And Beliar said, I will tell you much about the angels. Those who run together through the heavenly and the earthly regions are Mermaoth, Onomath, Duth, Melioth, Charuth, Grapathos, Hothra, Nophonos, and Chakudra. Together they fly through the regions of heaven, of earth, and the underworld. Bartholomew interrupted him and said, Be silent and powerless, so that I can entreat my lord. And Bartholomew fell on his face, and scattered earth on his head, and began, O Lord Jesus Christ, the great and glorious name, all the choirs of the angels praise you, Lord, and I also, who am unworthy in my lips, praise you, Lord. Hear me, your servant, and as you called me from the custom house, and did not allow me to remain the in, to the end of in my former manner of life, hear me, Lord Jesus Christ, and have mercy on the sinners. For when he had so prayed, the Lord said to him, Stand up. Turn to him that groans, and I will declare the rest to you. And Bartholomew raised up Satan and said to him, Go to your place with your angels. The Lord has mercy on all his world. But the devil said, Allow me to tell you how I was cast down here, and how God made man. I wandered to and fro in the earth, and God said to Michael, Bring me earth from the four winds into the earth, and water out of the four rivers of paradise. And when Michael had brought them to him, he formed Adam in the east, and gave form to the shapeless earth, and stretched sinews and veins, and united everything into a harmonious whole. And he showed him reverence for his own sake, because he was his image. And Michael also worshipped him. And when I came from the end of the world, Michael said to me, Worship the image of God, which he has made in his own likeness. But I said, I am fire of fire. I was the first angel to be formed. And shall I worship clay and matter? And Michael said to me, Worship, lest God be angry with you. And I answered, God will not be angry with me, but I will set up my throne over against his throne, and shall be as he is. Then God was angry with me and cast me down after he had commanded the windows of heaven to be opened. When I was thrown down, he asked the six hundred angels that stood under me whether they would worship Adam. They replied, as we saw our leader do, we also will not worship him who is less than ourselves. After our fall upon the earth, we lay for forty years in deep sleep, and when the sun shone seven times more brightly than fire, I awoke, 
and when I looked around, I saw the six hundred under me, overcome by deep sleep. And I awoke my son, Sopsan, and took counsel with him how I should deceive the man on whose account I had been cast out of heaven. And I devised the following plan. I took a bowl in my hand and scraped the sweat from my breast and my armpits, and washed myself in a spring of water from which the four rivers flow. And Eve drank of it, and the desire came upon her, for if she had not drunk of that water, I should not have been able to deceive her. Then Bartholomew commanded him to go into Hades, and he came to Jesus and fell at his feet, and began with tears to speak thus, Abba, Father, who cannot be discovered by us, word of the Father, whom the seven heavens hardly contained, but who were pleased to be contained easily and without pain in the body of the Virgin, without the Virgin knowing that she carried you, while you by your thought ordained everything as it should be, you who give us our daily bread without our asking for it, you who wore a crown of thorns in order to prepare for us repentant sinners, the precious heavenly crown who hung upon the cross and were given gall and vinegar to drink, in order to give us to drink the wine of contrition, and were pierced to the side with a spear, in order to satisfy us with your body and blood. You who gave the names to the four rivers, to the first, Pison, because of the faith which you preached after your appearance on earth, the second, Gihon, because man was formed of earth, the third, Tigris, that we might be shown the consubstantial trinity in heaven, and to the fourth, Euphrates, because by your coming on earth you made every soul rejoice through the message of immortality, my God, great Father and King, save, Lord, the sinners. When Bartholomew had uttered this prayer, Jesus said to him, Bartholomew, the Father named me Christ, that I might come down on earth and anoint with the oil of life everyone who came to me. And he called me Jesus, that I might heal every sin of the ignorant and give to men the truth of God. And Bartholomew said to him, Lord, may I reveal these mysteries to every man? And Jesus answered him, Bartholomew, my beloved, entrust them to all who are faithful, and can keep them for themselves. For there are some who are worthy of them, but there are also others to whom they ought not to be entrusted, for they are boasters, drunkards, proud, merciless, idolaters, seducers to fornication, slanderers, teachers of falsehood, endurers of all the works of the devil, and therefore they are not worthy that they should be entrusted to them. These things are also to be kept secret because of those who cannot contain them. For all who can contain them shall have a share in them. As regards this, therefore, my beloved, I have spoken to you. For you are blessed, and all who are akin to you in having this message entrusted to them. For all who contain it shall receive all they wish in all times of my judgment.